Hey, welcome back to Spirit Music Meetups. Mike Burris here. And I really look forward to this time, big time. A uh, time where God just speaks to us right there spontaneously. And I look forward to how he does that for you. You know, putting those comments down below in this video and on the website. Because that's how we learn from one another. You know, 1 Corinthians 14.26 says, Each of you bring a teaching. It's not about anybody wearing all the hats. That's Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Part of being having the transformation of, by the renewing of your mind is getting this idea of, you know, you need to hog the ball. And that's the biggest problem in the church, biggest problem in the world is ball hoggers. We saw that in school, didn't we? People who wanted to hog the ball, they got on the basketball court or wherever it was, they just had to have, they had to have that ball. They had to do it all. They had to wear all the hats because they have an ego. And uh, they don't see the body of Christ. So go look at body of Christ ministry. Well, we're on blog topic one of probably the most important uh, paradigm. A paradigm is a whole mindset. And you either have the paradigm of religion, which is the Old Testament way. It's actually all of religion is working for God. So go look at the introduction to this page, and then you can go into the individual blog topics. The introduction is important, so definitely go back in there. So we're just going to tackle these individual topics, right? I just feel this. Hey, my goofy shirt here, I wear at the gym. I'm 62, I don't think I'm ripping any shirts. I'm just happy to get some cardio in. And some weights here and there. Um, so let's look at this blog topic and let's have some fun. Uh, Lord, just open it up to us, you know. Give us your prophetic rhema word, that's what it's about. So let's, let's read what we have here. And uh, we'll just let the Lord speak through it. And I can't wait to see how he speaks through you. So this is called Absolutely Nothing from the Old Covenant was meant for the New Covenant. Yeah, definitely look at the introduction. Absolutely nothing from the Old Covenant was intended to be used in the New Covenant. Because the Bible says that the old, right, is finished and replaced by the new but it doesn't stop people from twisting the Old Testament scriptures to try to say this right or the New Testament writings it doesn't stop they'll just keep working at it you know and I'm gonna go with the flow see go with the flow we're not we're not supposed to be just presenting an image so I'm gonna add some things as the Lord shows it to me okay so, I'm going to just add some things. Yeah, it's Old Testament scriptures, scriptures or New Testament writings. That's what I found after studying everything I could find on the subject and writing many papers on the subject over many years. The Law or Old Covenants Scripture is it just 613 commandments or the books of Moses, which is the first five books of the Bible, as the Jews technically, technically classify them as, all right? It's called the Tanakh, the first five books, uh, the written law. All the New Testament speakers referred to every part of the Old Testament as law, just as many... Uh, as most Jews actually do today, right? So they're referring to Psalms and the writings and other parts, Proverbs, and, and they're saying, hey, this is the law, just as Jews today do, all right? Because all of the Old Testament graphe scripture, that's the word, graphe, where we get graph paper, is God's instruction or Torah to the Jews, Every reference that Jesus made to Scripture was either to answer a trick question, 
right, put forth by experts to trap him. Go back. I, I did. <laughs> Looked at everything. Or to show the limitations and insufficiency of Old Testament Scripture. And also the traditions of the fathers of the oral tradition built around it. All right, Mishnah. Or to show that he came to fulfill Scripture. So this is, this is the only places that he refers. So a very small amount, actually, about fulfilling Scripture, which he did completely by the time of his last breath. We'll see this. He never taught his disciples Old Testament Scripture. Do you know that? He picked it apart. He, he definitely showed limitations to it. Certainly not the law that made up 97.4% of it. And there's um, something you can see. There's a link. So you want to go out to the link on this video. Nor did he elaborate on its implications as all the other rabbis have ever done. All right? All the other rabbis have ever done. See, that they... This is what rabbis do. They elaborate on the Old Testament scriptures. And Jesus critiqued them to help the Jews see their insufficiency and the limitations. And you can go back and look at that. I have. And it's the law is about 97.4% of the Old Testament. That's why the, uh, Jesus and all the other writers... They routinely refer to all parts of the Old Testament as the law. Now that's you got to keep that in mind, right? Keep that in mind because there's a there's not very much that isn't the law. All right, so now there was only about 450 Old Testament prophecies of Jesus. Some say 300. I've seen that 300 more than 450, but. You can stretch it out to about 450. And we know that early Jewish Christians used these, we know this from church history, used these to convert Jews to Christ, just as Timothy was converted by his grandmother, Eunice, using these select scriptures. In context, that's what you find out. That's what Paul says. Paul says this in 2 Timothy 3.15 and 16. This is very important because words are defined by context. He says, pas, scripture, pas, scripture. Now, what does pas mean? It means all of a category of. It, it mostly never refers to the entirety of something or the whole of something. Pas almost always refers to all within a category. All of a category of scripture, that is profitable. There is no word is, right? Is profitable. There is no verb is profitable. Profitable is an adjective, right? It's a, it's a noun being used as an adjective. So he's really saying, pass all of a category of scripture, that is profitable. Well, that is that is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Right? That the man, you, so you can't say all, every kind of scripture, Old Testament, is God breathed. Right? That's, that, you know, we see this God breathed, right? is God breathed. So we see this God breathed and we say, oh, all of, he's saying all of scripture, every bit of scripture is God breathed. That's not what it says in the Greek. So you can actually go out and I've done this in 2 Timothy. You can go out to Bible Hub and you can type in, and you can do your own homework, really. Yeah, what a concept. 2 Timothy 3.16. And 
and hit the interlinear button. This is Bible Hub, right? I don't like crooked videos, do you? I don't know why this thing does that. All right. So, the word Kai, every scripture that is the God breathed ones, that's what it's saying. It's an adjective. The God breathed ones. There's no is. You could put it in there. Some people say, yeah, you should put it in there. And it's singular because scripture is singular, right? That's what we see. It's singular. So it's saying any particular verse of scripture. It's talking um, every, it's not all, it's every, every of a category of singular scripture, right? It says, is God breathe singular, there it is, singularly, God breathed. Again, singular, singular. So it's referring to verses of scripture. Well, they didn't have numbers, but you get the idea. And the word, and, so it says right after that, it uses the coupler, and, which is often means, and thus, right? So we see that, chi, and thus, profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God, and we know from the context that this is Timothy, may be complete, equipped for every good work. These are the only ones that make you, in the context, verse 15. Verse 15 is the context. Words are always defined by context. So when he says every of a category, you should be asking yourself, what category is he talking about? Well, he just said that in verse 15. These are the only ones that make you wise unto salvation through trusting, relying faith in Jesus Christ. Because pos in Greek doesn't often mean the whole or entirety, right? It's not usually what it means, of anything, right? does not mean that. But instead, all of a certain type of something. And we can look at all it's talking about in there. All of a certain type, or all or every, in this case, every, because it's singular, of a certain type or category or class. of something. And that's what we see in that verse. All right? Paul was Okay, so we just got that clarified. There's a lot more about this. Paul was always repu reproofing, rebuking, admonishing and correcting the teachers of the law. We have to see that all through his writings. His opponents who infiltrated the churches, they spied, they were spies, and caused division. And he told his trainees to avoid them and their scriptures for all this. Paul only taught, quote, the righteousness of God that is through trusting, relying faith in Jesus Christ. That's what he did. The man of God in mind is Timothy, an evangelist of the Logos gospel message, not a teacher of the law. The good work that Paul talks about, that Paul taught, was the result of God's unconditional fav loving favor of grace. See, it's a loving favor of grace, which is unconditional, abounding to you. Now being God's workmanship, right, to you. To you, to us, right? 
now being God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus, that Christ will establish in us and will complete in us at his coming, which is directly coupled by the conjunction chi to experiential relational intimate knowledge of God, right? This is all about intimate knowledge of God. Therefore, it's entirely false to hold up the Bible and say Paul taught that the whole or entirety of Scripture is God-breathed. Because that's not what it says. That's not what the Greek says, right? It does not say that. It doesn't even say that in context. Context is a text without a context is a pretext. The whole or entirety of Scripture is profitable uh, for teaching. It's not saying that. It's not saying that. All if it's breathe, God breathed and thus profitable for teaching. It's just not what Paul said. It's not what he said. And if you want to really dive into this, there is. I remember the Lord showed. Did, I did a big, big detail on this, and I think it's in the Logos message of God. And it's, um, yes, doesn't T 2 Timothy 3.16 say that all scripture is profitable for teaching? And that's uh, Logos, Message of God, BT, um, BT7, Blog Topic 7. So I'm going to put a reference there so that you can go look at the details of that. All right, Logos, Word of God, BT7. All right, so you can go look at that and really dig into that because there's a lot of misunderstanding. They're trying to build doctrine off of the English Bibles, which is really, really dangerous. Really, really dangerous. Um, so that will help clarify that. Context is saying it's the ones that made Timothy wise unto salvation through Jesus Christ. And we know that's only about 2.6%. Only about 2.6%. And yes, that's what it is. About 2.6%. About 2.6%. Of the uh oh, that's what you want to go look at. There's a, a topic about that, and okay, about 2.6 percent of the Old Testament, right? So, you want to see. Uh, logos, uh, Word of God, blog topic six. See, I did a lot of research for a long time on these things, and so you might as well get into it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you for reminding me about that so that people can really understand you can't build doctrine around English Bibles. You just can't do it. So the early church abandoned the use of the Old Testament. If you read early church writings like I have all of them, considering it completely fulfilled by Christ and thus irrelevant. This is the early church writings. So... We know this from early Christian writings from, from 70 to 200 A.D. The scriptures were but, according to the New Testament, shadows, it uses different words, shadows, copies, of types, and symbols that correspond to good things to come. And only a hired servant, they were only regarded as hired servants to escort little children to school until they were of age. And, and so there are certain words in the Greek that were used for this, pedagogus, 
and hiring managers. There's three different Greek words used for these hired servants to escort little children to school. So they were treating the Jews as if they were little children until they were of age, right? For their inheritance. That's what a for their inheritance. And the inheritance is if, as your mature sons, and that came when Christ came. The New Testament also states this, right? All often. Especially in Paul's writings to Jews unwilling uh, to be converted. They were unwilling, so he is arguing with them. Christians have been set free from the law because they died to every one of its 613 commandments, which were nailed to the cross, so they are no longer obligated to be taught or guided by it. Do you understand that 97.4%, you know, 300 to 450 Old Testament prophecies, right, depending on who you talk to. Uh, and, you know, there's maybe a 600 total that have to do with New Covenant realities. So, not a lot. The New Testament also states this often, right? We've been set free. We are no longer obligated to be taught or guided by it. And there's a lot of verses here. So, you see why I could say absolutely nothing from the Old Covenant was meant for the New Covenant. Now, we'll, we'll talk about this much more. So, you want to go look at the verses here, and you'll see much more argument. Much more argument. Alright, I think that's pretty good for this particular blog topic. So I look forward to your input. Go look at these verses and look at the links that I gave to you because it'll go into much more depth, right? Um, so you can really see, see the evidence that is presented. Right? God bless you. Look forward to your comments down below. It's a paradigm shift. It's a whole different mindset that we're, we're trying to enter in because if you're living in the old, you can't be living the new. It says you're either under the law and all that it represents, or you're under grace. You can't be under one or, you know, both. <laughs> you have to choose, and they're radically different. They're completely different. They're exactly opposite, just as the old covenant is completely different than the new covenant. And we'll see that in future blogs. Okay, God bless you. Bye-bye.